behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for you are without beginning and without end. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of creation. Loving Lord, source of all that is good, mercifully receive our evening praise and thanksgiving. As you have led us through the day and brought us to the night's beginning, keep us now in Christ. Grant us a peaceful evening and a night free from sin, and at the end, bring us to everlasting life in Christ our Lord, through whom we offer glory, honor, and worship to you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not even run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith. I am glad and rejoice with all of you, and in the same way, you also must be glad and rejoice with me. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So far in our series on stewardship, we have been focusing on parts of stewardship that really affect each of us as individuals. We've looked at being stewards of our life, our time, our talents, our money, and our stuff. Well, tonight, as we conclude our, our um, series on being stewards, we are going to look at being stewards of our congregation community, or what it means to be a steward of the body of Christ, the church. So we're going from us individually to us corporately, or the church. Being a steward of the congregation community is really being a steward of the ministry and mission that God has given to our church and how we together can be Christ in the world to those around us. Stewardship really begins with God's love and how God came down to us in love through God's son, Jesus Christ. We are all receivers of this love. We belong to God and all that we have is God's. And it is out of receiving this amazing love that we are free to be Christ, to love, give, and serve to the world around us. Being the body of Christ then means that we are able to find ways to serve the world and to bring the message of God's love to our neighbors, not just in words, but in mission to our neighborhood, our community, and the world we live in. It means getting out of our comfort zone. It means being the church outside of the walls of the church which is exactly what we're having to do right now since we have to keep ourselves quarantined and stay safe at home. You know, we can still be church even if we're not together physically on Sunday morning, Monday evening, or a Wednesday night. We are the church wherever we are, whoever we are with, and whatever we are doing. I think this is one of the places that the church is really struggling with right now. So often we think of our own personal needs, keeping the doors open, handling the issues surrounding an older building. We certainly have those issues here at Zion, don't we? 
and also anything else that may pertain to the needs of the church inside of our walls. We can get all so insulated that into our own issues that the mission field outside of the front door can sometimes be given little thought to. And it's easy to do that when your church is facing difficult times or maybe when you're struggling financially to keep the church running. When this happens, a church can become what I would call insular. They're broken off from the rest of the world, kind of like an island separated from the land and connection with the outside world is. Most congregations, those are not entirely an island, all there out on their own. Even insular congregations give money outside of their walls, connect with the outside ministries, and are involved in Senate or church-wide activities. But the focus of an insular church is not as much mission and ministry as it is brick and mortar. Now, don't get me wrong. It is important to have a base to do your mission and ministry from. I've seen, I've missed seeing all your faces here at Zion. Our building seems awfully quiet without kids running around or um, the noise that we make on our days that we worship here together. It is wonderful and blessing to have such a beautiful worship place as we do here at Zion to have a place where we can be the body of Christ. And I do also believe that Zion is truly blessed to be right here in the neighborhood that we're in. We do have a large facility and that does take a lot of money to run, but we also have a commitment to the community around us and to the needs that those have that live in this area, the needs they have to know God, for us to be Christ in their lives, to be there in their struggles as well as their joys. But I also want to make it clear that we are not just a building. We are mission and ministry. That's what we're here for. If this building were somehow to collapse around us at this very moment while I'm preaching, would we still be a church? It would hurt, I know, me personally, but would we still be a church? The answer, of course, is yes. God has set us here to do God's work right where we are in Appleton. And in this time where we're not meeting in our building, do we still have mission and ministry to do? Again, the answer is yes. We have mission and ministry to do wherever we are, even if we're not congregating in one place. So how do we meet the needs of the community we live in? That's a question that I believe every church needs to focus on. Because being stewards of a congregational community is about assessing what gifts we have at our church and finding ways to use those gifts to support the community. Now we're still in the planning stage here, but let me get, give you an example of what I'm talking about. Zion, Zion Lutheran decided back in what I believe was 2013 to open our facilities up to the Appleton Bilingual School. Now I'm not certain what all the reasons behind that were. I'm sure there were some financial reasons behind the decision, because let's face it, the rent does help to maintain our facility. But I also believe, and I can see just from talking to people when we talk about the school here, um, that there was a decision being made to help support emotionally through prayers and gifts and other needs, this school using our facility. Our involvement with this school has made not just a big impact on the students, the faculty and the parents who are part of the program, it also makes a big impact on us. And our involvement will continue to grow. Now, this is just in the discussion stage right now, so we haven't really brought it to the congregation for that very reason, but we have been in discussion with some of the leadership of the school to talk about providing them maybe some green space outside. And even as they decide what to do with that green space, be it a playground, a soccer field, or other areas where the children can play, um, we might be able to help them financially do that so that it would become part of us as well as part of that school. So that we can not only see the students of that school use the area, but our own children and our own neighborhood be able to play around um, here in our neighborhood, around Zion. This is really what mission and ministry looks like finding ways to reach outside of our own insular needs and to go out in the world showing Christ's love to those that we encounter. Jesus tells us when we care for another, one another, we are actually caring for him. 
And that's what we as a congregation are called to do, to reach outside of our walls, to find ways to bring the presence of Christ to our neighbors, and to be the church wherever we are. So be the church to those around you. Even in this time where we are staying safe at home, we can be the church. Make a few calls to people in our congregation that you know live alone. Maybe write a card to each of our shut-ins, and if you don't have that list, we can easily provide it for you. Be Christ to the world around you, and know that you are the church wherever you are. Amen. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruits abound. Let not the sly satanic fall this holy seed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all that we have been given, may we be constantly reminded of the blessings in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all health care workers, that God's love and mercy may guide them as they care for the sick and for all who are ill. May they receive the care that they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our church community, that our time spent apart may be a reminder of the blessings that we have in coming together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all the intentions that we hold in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together we pray our Lenten prayer. Merciful God, accompany, accompany our, our journey, journey through, through these, these 40 days. days. Renew, Renew us in the gift of baptism, baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Amen. God's peace be with you this evening.